this topic I have arranged it in a, in a form so what we are going to do we want to see what it entails so today's topic is major water and hydrogen the water and hydrogen topic let me just a little bit our topic it's water and hydrogen this topic water and hydrogen uh, one of the most important subtopic we want to understand the sources of water on the screen I have projected some few sources of water and of which I want from you you can type other sources as we share the first source I have typed is rain then we have rivers we have the sea we have the spring now another source that you know I want you to type below another source that you know very fast another source of water that I have not mentioned members any source now I've said we have springs we have the sea we have the rivers we have the rain so another source you know of water yes Iman You can type because I've muted your microphone. Just type in the chat another source of water you know. Who is speaking? Somebody is speaking. Okay. okay. Iman, what were you saying? Iman. Okay. Now, this is of water that I've mentioned. The water of most great oceans and the rivers this water normally evaporates when this water evaporates it goes up to the atmosphere and then it evaporates as water to the atmosphere this water then condenses on reaching the cooler part of the atmosphere to form clouds and it eventually falls to the earth again now when we talk of this water it will get again reach the atmosphere After then it will also evaporate again. So this continues and it forms what we call as a circle. Let me admit these members who want to come in.
So see if, ex, excuse me a little bit. The sources of water and the formation of the water cycle. Now this water cycle I was sharing to you that water goes up to the atmosphere. This water condenses and it comes as rain. It evaporates, condenses, comes. So this appears as if the water is going in a cycle. The water is cycling, going round and round, coming up and down. We call this one a water cycle. Now in this water cycle, a lot of rain goes into the rivers, goes into the sea, the lake, and while the remainder of the water that does not go into the, ocean, into the ocean, it sinks to the ground. And after sinking, it finds its way into the rivers. From the river, it flows into the ocean again, from where it is evaporated. And this circulation is what we call as a water cycle. I will show this one in a diagram, whereby I want to demonstrate that one, that here rain, we, are, we have rain that is going to come. This rain will go to the surface of the, the surface of the earth, and then when the temperatures are high, the water will evaporate, go back again. Then water can also rain on the mountains, flow into the rivers, it can be absorbed by trees, again through transpiration, the water can evaporate or can go to the atmosphere again. The water which goes to the rocks that are the permissible, which can allow water to get in, we call them permissible rocks, the water can percolate into the, uh, into the rocks and then goes fine underground flow, then flow again to the river. That's why you see, if this water gets into the river or the lakes, percolates, finds an underground flow, it goes to the river again. So the water is as if the water is going round, is forming a cycle. So when, the, when it's raining, is the water that had evaporated or a water that had transpired from the trees. So we call this one a water cycle. So our topic today, we are, going to, we are talking about water and hydrogen. First here, we are looking at the sources of water. Then we have narrowed to the sources of water. Then when we look at the mountains, mountains like now in Kenya, we have Mount Kenya. We have Mount Kilimanjaro near the border of Mount Elgon. The top of those mountains, we have ice. So when you look at this mountain I project on the screen, when that water is heated, it goes, undergoes sublimation. And once all the water reaches the sky, all the, the clouds, the higher you go, the cooler it becomes. Then it cools, it condenses. Once it condenses, it comes back as rain. So it goes up as water vapor, but it comes down as uh, water liquid. So this process, what I've drawn, is what we call the water cycle. Now, once we have water in our life, if somebody gave you water, we have so many other liquids that resemble water, all look like water. How do you test? How do you tell that what you are having is exactly water? So our first item for today is is to understand the standard test for water. If somebody gives you a liquid that is colorless, you can suspect that it is water. We have many liquids which are not water but they are colorless. So whenever you have a liquid, we call it a non-liquid, we suspect, but how do we test for water? We have two standard tests for water. One is you take that drop of colorless, clear, and a non-liquid, we don't know it, we call it a non-liquid, and they place it in anhydrous copper-2-sulfate powder. Now, 
what do we expect when we do this experiment? So the result of this experiment will determine whether what we're having is water or not. Let me show you the experiment of when we use anhydrous copper 2 sulfate to test for water. When we talk of anhydrous, it means it doesn't have water. When we say hydrated, it means it has water. So in this case, we have anhydrous copper 2 sulfate. Let me connect the internet so that we can uh, watch it live. So one of the tests, we use anhydrous copper 2 sulfate, which is white in color. When you have been given anhydrous copper 2 sulfate, it is normally white in color. Now, once you add water, the color might change or not. Depending on the color change, we can then say, whether this liquid which we are suspecting it's water or not. Now, because we are not in the lab, I will share with you an experiment online which I want us to watch keenly. So let us be keen and watch that experiment. I will be explaining step by step. Now, in this case, we want first to get, you, when you have hydrated copper 2 sulfate and anhydrous, so the copper 2 sulfate is a salt. And this salt is in the form of crystals. When it has water, it forms a crystal that is blue. And when it has no water, it forms a powder. So water is the one which makes it to be in a crystal form. So when we say copper 2 sulfate crystals, we mean it has water of crystallization. This water, when it's not there, it becomes powder, just like flour, maize flour. So in this case, when we look at the equation I've written on the board, we have copper sulfate dot 5. That water is not part of the compound, but the water is the one that is holding the crystals. So when you heat it, it will lose that water and then it becomes copper without water. That copper without water, we call it anhydrous. So the difference, the copper with water, we call it hydrated copper 2 sulfate. And the copper without water, we call anhydrous copper 2 sulfate. That's the difference. So the first question is, what do you observe when you heat hydrated copper 2 sulfate? That's the question. So you want to take hydrated copper 2 sulfate that is blue and they heat it, then observe what happens. So that's the experiment. When you look at that, it is blue in color. The hydrated copper 2 sulfate, it's blue in color. So then we have a Bunsen burner. We want to heat it. Then let us observe what happens when we heat hydrated copper 2 sulfate that is having. We want now to get rid of, get water out of it. When you look at it, you can share in the chat section where the color is changing as the copper is heated. That color change is very crucial. Now who can chat and write the color change? What color is it displaying now? We have the chat section in our Zoom whereby you can chat and give an observation. Is there a color change or it remains the same?
Anybody? Let me see what people are saying. We have Iman saying the copper is turning from. No, I want you to write for me what you are observing, not what you know from the experiment. As the color changed from which color to which color? I've given you one minute to type very fast. Now, anybody else, let me see. I've seen a chart here. The color change. Whether the color has changed. Somebody, uh, somebody is saying, can't see anything. I rat. I don't know what you mean, you can't see anything. Same here. You can't see. Can you hear? Can you hear? Or what can't you see? What don't you see? You're not seeing the video. 